you love people, but you don't love them because you don't give them what they want. Ah, that's the problem. What we mean by love is to help them obey God. We don't mean give them what they want. And them is anybody. That's what love is. People come here all the time. I want this. I want that. I want that. That's not love. It's not about what you want. It's about what God tells us to do. That's love. Okay? So we're not being con- in- inconsistent. We're being very consistent. And-, and when it comes to marriage, the church has always been man and woman. So it still hasn't changed ever. So how is that inconsistent? The world has changed. That's not our problem. That's not our problem. In San Francisco, they have what they call a sex-positive culture. And they were, uh, I heard that term where a lady was at a news conference, they were trying to legalize prostitution. And so they said, we have a sex-positive culture and blah, 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 blah. Uh, The big picture is that the devil wants to create a sex-positive culture in this country where anybody can have any sexual relationship with anybody and it's okay. That's the long-term goal. And we want to take sex outside of the marriage. See, I could tell you all day long that marriage only belongs in a, ma- uh, sex only belongs in a marriage. And even though you may disagree, and even though you all do it anyway, uh, and you suffer the consequences thereof, you won't ever argue, at least legally, that it's wrong. Because really, deep down inside, you know. But what they want to do is say, no, we want it to be free. We want to take it out of the marriage where anybody can have sex with anybody legally. And it is illegal. We want to make it illegal to talk against it, which is true in the public schools, by the way. You can't talk against it, the alternative lifestyle. And so that's what the bigger picture is. And once God, once the devil can do that, then he can start to destroy the image of God. Because God... Making a man and woman to become one is part of his image. The bride being Jesus, I mean the bride being the church and the groom being Jesus. In the Bible, the church is the bride and the groom is Jesus. And in the end, they have a marriage wedding in Revelation. Mm -hmm. So God set it up that way. You're going to see in a couple weeks that when man was alone in the garden, God said, and there was no woman. No woman had ever been made. It was the saddest day on the planet. It was just just a man. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Can I get an amen from the ladies? Can I get an amen from the fellas? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, so here's a man all by himself. And you know what God said? And, and I'll, I'll talk more about this in two weeks. But he says, I have to make a compatible mate. Compatible for a lot of things. One of which is my eternal plan. So he made a woman. The woman is the compatible mate. And that was it. And you know what he said? It's good. End of story. It's God. It's God. That's the rules we go by, not what culture says. What the devil wants to do is he wants to attack that and destroy that any way he can. That is what you are watching. As Christians, you need to not get into your your emotions and you like this person. That is not please. God, because you want them to experience God too. You want them to understand who God is. They may not want it, but that's not your problem. Your, your orders to say, I got to obey God, and God will honor you. So you, we're not being a hypocrite by sticking up for God's agenda. Oh, no, God is going to honor that. Okay? Last one, judgmental. You Christians are judgmental. Decisions pertaining to right and wrong. You Christians are judgmental. How many of you heard that? Say amen. Amen. Very good. The claim is that the church and Christians think they have a right to decide who is wrong and who is right or what is wrong. wrong. Yes, we do. We We have a right and a responsibility to stand up for what the Bible says is right and the Bible says is wrong for us. And we have a right to exercise all of our freedoms in this country, United States of America, to express that opinion just as much as the non-Christian or the atheist or the Muslim or whoever has a right to express their opinion. No less, no more. And so when someone tells you, don't put your religion on us, you need to say, don't put your atheism on us. <laughs> don't, be, don't put your evolution on me. Don't put your expectation on me. It's the same thing. And so, but here's the thing. When it comes to being judgmental, here's something, and if you're taking notes, please write this down because this is a very 
a very, you're talking about a fine line, a, a very specific distinction you want to make. If my son as a little kid said to me, Dad, I want to put my hand in the fire. And if I say, don't put your hand in the fire, it's going to hurt you. And he says, you don't like me. You think I'm bad. I said, how did you connect me telling you, uh, warning you about dangerous behavior and me calling you a bad person? I'm going to say it again. How did you connect me warning you about dangerous behavior and saying you're a bad person? What the devil wants you to think that if you correct anybody because you know it's going to hurt them based on what you know about God in life, that you're calling them a bad person. Those two things have nothing to do with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. I tell you all the time stuff that's dangerous for you to do. Amen? I tell you don't have sex. I tell you wait till you get married. I tell you don't get high. All the stuff that your mama tells you, you don't want to hear it. Am I telling the truth? And, what do you, and hopefully most of you leave here going, yeah, uh, I know. I'm going to probably do it anyway. I shouldn't say most of you say that. But, uh, <laughs> but at least you say, I hope you don't feel like I'm telling you you're a bad person. Because what I'm telling you that if you do that, here's what's going to happen. So when you tell somebody, look, the Christian position is that marriage should be a man and a woman, and it really shouldn't be between two people. Oh, you're calling me bad. No. Matter of fact, I love you, and I want to help you. No, you just hate me. No, I really don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> really, all that is is you're not giving me what I want. The only reason people get mad at anything, and this applies to all of you and everybody you ever know for the rest of your life, the reason people get angry is for one reason. They don't get with their way. They don't get their way. 100 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every time you get frustrated or you get angry, it's because you didn't get what you wanted. That's all that's about. It has nothing to do with right or wrong. It has to do with what I want. See y'all later up there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> They didn't get what they wanted. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, when you, when you, when, if someone says judgmental, you have to understand, no, no, no. I'm not judging you and saying you're a bad person. I'm telling you that if you do this, it's dangerous. If you do this, it's going to be hurtful. You have to make the distinction. So here's my encouragement to you as we close. Number one, if you have disagreed with anything, I would challenge you to this, is to make your disagreement based on this. And I would love to hear it because if, if I'm wrong, I want to be right according to this book. Okay? Number two, I would challenge you if you really want to grow in your faith, go talk to some people about this. Now, expect argument, expect anger, expect being called those names, but also expect this. You will grow spiritually tremendously. You will, ex you will suffer for righteousness' sake, and you will identify more with Jesus than you ever did when you, get when you get attacked. And you will grow. And then you go back and you look at this stuff, and you study it, and you read the word, and you get uh, educated on the issue. And be prepared for October 1st on Wednesday night, because we're going to have some interesting people here talk about their experience, especially this woman. And you're going to hear some stuff you, you hopefully will help you as well. In the end, we have to go out and vote. Matter of fact, y'all should all vote anyway on everything. You should vote. Make sure you vote for one of the president, can, presidential candidates, but vote Proposition 8 because if we lose this, uh, the next step is making even talking against this stuff illegal. Now, some people think I'm making that up. There has been legislation um, uh, submitted in Washington to make some of the stuff I said talking against homosexuality illegal. Illegal. In Canada today, you can't preach against homosexuality. It's illegal. You cannot preach against it. In other countries around the world, you can't. You go to jail. One pastor went to jail. In Canada, they put Romans chapter 1, R-O-M-A-N-S, 1, which talks about homosexuality being an abomination. They put it on a billboard. They had to take it down. It was hate speech. That kind of stuff is brewing in the United States of America. Why? It's a satanic level. Because why he wants to make this all do whatever you want. This is, this is not, I'm not making this up, this stuff is true. And there's a church in a, a chapel in New Jersey, they lost their license because they didn't perform a, a same-sex marriage and they, and they lost their nonprofit status. They are fighting it in court. It's already happening. 
What does it have to do with us? It's an attack on this. 